Hello and welcome to the sewing studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make the quilt behind me which has been made using jelly roll strips. Now the quilt behind me is Threads That Bind by Blackbird Designs and I'm demonstrating it in Kansas Troubles colours today. And what you need with this quilt is a selection of light and dark. So I've started by sewing four jelly roll strips together and you do a dark to a light, a dark to a light, a dark to a light, a dark to a light. And the important thing with this is how you press your fabric because we need to make all our seams lock together because there's points on this quilt where you've got eight pieces of fabric all interlocking. So I've already sewn these together and the next thing to do is to actually measure how wide these strips are and that is from here to here. Now you might think well that's strange surely it should be eight and a half or eight and a quarter but everybody's quarter inch foot is slightly different and with this accuracy is the key. So the thing to do is to measure the width of your blocks. So this one measures exactly eight and hopefully this one will as well. Yeah, so mine measure exactly eight. So it may be that yours are eight and a quarter depending on how wide you've done your seams. So the first thing to do then is to cut this into eight inch blocks so that these form a square. So I'm going to tidy off this edge here. No, I'm not. Before I do that, I'm going to put them together and cut them. So before I tidy them up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay them on top of each other, right sides together. So you can see I'm putting my light fabric to my dark fabric. And then the last one is my dark to my light. So you can see that these are going opposite. And the thing with this, because they are jelly roll strips, and they're on the, they'll be on the bias in a minute when we cut them, is try not to handle them too much. So I'm going to lay that on top. I'm not going to press them together this time because I don't want to do too much pressing because I don't want it stretching anything. And then I'm going to tidy up my edges. So now, I am cutting them into eight inch blocks. So you should get five across the width of your fabric. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully cut these on the diagonal. And I'm going to do that with all of them. But let me just show you what we do next. We then join these so you can see that that is now form it a square and this is why it's important to make sure that you've pressed it the right way because when we come to join these up so if I just show you on this camera you can see that the seams are going in opposite ways so I'm locking those two dark pieces of fabric together and I'm going to pop a pin in and the same here you can see and I'm going to pop a pin in there. So I'm going to cut all of my blocks on the diagonal and pin them ready for sewing. So 
So I'm now going over to the sewing machine to sew these blocks together. Before I do that, if you like what we do, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. So I've pinned these together and you can see here that my seams are going the opposite way. And because this is now cut on the bias, it's best to try not to handle it too much because you will get a lot of stretch and movement. And we need to be quite accurate with this block. So I'm just going to take these over to the iron and press them. I've actually got to just go and sew one more square because as you can see these blocks as they join together let's move it over here so that I can demonstrate it I need to sew another block because when these all get sewn together you can see how the light and dark changes so we've gone dark to light to dark to light to dark to light and you can see here how these all join together. We've got a dark and a light opposite one another. So I'm just going to sew one more piece. So I need to make sure I've got a piece like this with the green here. So that would be how it sits like that. So when you've done your whole jelly roll, you'll have lots of pieces all joined together. So you need to make sure that you've got the right order of light and dark. So I'm just going to find another piece that fits there. So as you can see, if these were all joined together, that is what forms our block. And the quilt is made up of nine of these blocks. And then these pieces, when they're attached to the next block, they form a different shape. So you would join all of these together and you just need to be really careful when you are coming to your center piece here because you've got so many layers of fabric. So pin these together so you can see here, you've got your lights and darks going the opposite way. Sew those together, do that with this, with this one here and then join them all together. And your block will look like this when it's all been joined together. So we're just going to go over to the quilt behind me and we're going to see how this other part forms another block and we'll talk about how this one's going to be quilted. So you can see we've joined our nine blocks together and this one's got a border which measures four inches so that gives a finished quilt of approximately 52 inches square. Now, there's quite a lot going on because it's such a busy pattern. So not only have we got this center block here, we've also got, if you stand back and look at it, we've also got this block here. So that forms a different shape as well. So when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, I'm probably going to quilt this in a cross hatch design. So I'm gonna come down these lines here and I'm going to come across these lines here. And with this quilt, it's not for the faint hearted. Um, I would say don't look too closely because sometimes the points are quite difficult to get lined up. So that's the beauty of a good bit of heavy quilting in a fancy stitch. It hides a multitude. So I'll probably do some tram lines in the border and I'm going to bind it with, well, there is no other color for me, but this gorgeous purple. So as always, have fun, make it your own, 
and I look forward to seeing you next time here in the sewing studio.